So you're ready to launch a podcast, but you need to find some guests to actually interview for the show. Well, in this video, we're going to go through the entire process from inviting guests, getting them ready to record, helping them look and sound the best during that recording, how to use Riverside to get high quality up to 4K video quality and audio, and then the best ways to repurpose and edit that content so you can share it on social media or maybe even a video podcast. Now we're going to be going into deep detail on the entire process. And so if you'd like to skip to a certain part of the video to learn more about the actual technical interview aspects, maybe some gear kits that we recommend sending out to interview guests, use the chapters here in the YouTube video. If you roll over the video, you'll see them displayed right here, or you can even go down into the video description and see the timestamps and topics there. Quickly, before we get into all the technical aspects, how do you find a guest for your podcast? There's actually many different ways of finding the perfect guest for your show. Ideally, the guest will be unique to your topic or niche. Hopefully they have a larger audience so that if they share the episode of the podcast that you've interviewed them for, then it will garner more listeners and viewers. If you're looking for guests of your show, we do have a whole video dedicated to this. You can check it out above or in the description. But a few ways is searching for authors, book authors, or maybe even blog and website authors who are in your niche. Find their website, find their blogs, and send them an email. Use their contact form. Also, browsing or searching for topics in TikTok and Instagram Reels is a great way to find influencers in your niche that will be great for an interview as well. You can even use AI tools like Notion AI or ChatGPT and literally ask the AI what would be some good guests for a podcast about technology, about business, about meditation, whatever your specific show is about. AI can actually suggest topics. Would highly recommend using ChatGPT version 4 as it has the most up-to-date and current information on the internet and could really suggest some great guests. Now, typically the first step in booking that interview guest is the cold email or just the message out of nowhere. Maybe you slid into their DMs or you found their email address. You want to make sure your email communication is brief, to the point, but does give a reason why they should be interviewed by you, the podcast host. We actually have an email template that you can customize to reach out to your potential guests. But in that email, you do want to include who you are, what audience you have or garnered on social media, which might attract a guest to saying they could reach a new audience, what your show is about, what particular topic or niche, and what you hope to hear from them in an interview. If they've written a book recently, an article, or maybe they've done a TED Talk, Mention in the email the specific piece of content that actually drew you to them asking for an interview. That will show them you have a genuine interest in their work and will help them have an idea of the kind of topic or tone of the interview that you hope to have on the podcast. And then make a specific ask. Ask for a 30 or 45 minute interview around questions. You can say that you'll send those questions ahead of time so they can be prepared. And you can even include a Calendly link or another service where the person you're emailing can book a time with you and not even have to go back and forth in emails trying to arrange that recording time. Remember, the people you're contacting, whether they're influencers, authors, or other people of interest, they're probably very busy, they receive a lot of communications, so being as brief as possible in the email, but including all of that pertinent information, and then making it easy to schedule a recording time with you is of the utmost importance. We're gonna go into details about that in a moment. Double check your email for typos, make sure you read it over, and then you can send that email or DM that person and hopefully you'll be able to book that incredible guest. Now, one of the great things about recording with Riverside is once you've created a studio inside your Riverside account, you can use the same link to invite multiple guests into the future for all of your recordings. Let's show you how that works. Here on my studio's listing page, I can roll over my studio name, click the three dots, and then you'll see the invite to studio option. When I click invite to studio, this window will pop up and I can choose audience, guest, or producer. Anytime you're recording an interview with a remote guest, you always want to invite them as a guest. A producer can see the technical aspects of the call. They can even share their screen, start presentation slides, and keep an eye on the audio levels, but producers are not recording. And if you were streaming live, then you would send the audience link out. With an audience link, someone can view your studio live if you have it set as public. But for any interview you're conducting, even with multiple guests, you'll choose the guest link here in the dropdown and then click copy. Once you have that guest link, now you can actually include that in something like your Calendly account, where anytime someone books a recording time with you, they'll have access to this Riverside guest link and they'll be good to go. Let's actually go over to Calendly and set this up. Here on the Calendly website, and we'll put a link in the video description, you can click get started or log in if you already have an account. Once I've logged in, I'm going to click the create button and choose event type. From here, I'll choose a one-on-one -on -one meeting. We'll name our event something like Riverside interviews. For location, let's actually set custom, and here we're actually going to put the guest link to our Riverside Studio. I'll go back to Riverside, click copy on that guest link, and then paste it here in this field. I'll click update, 
And then down here in the description, we would encourage you to include as many details as possible that your guest will need when they book this. Here I've included everything my guest needs when they record. They need to open this link in either the Chrome or Edge web browser to record. I encourage them to check their internet stability to connect to ethernet if possible, or just make sure their Wi-Fi connection is stable. I encourage them to use an external mic for the best audio quality. And we'll get more into some of those gear kit recommendations in a moment. I encourage them to use headphones. This increases the quality of the audio, reduces some of that echo. And we also ask to close some of their other applications just in case they don't have a very powerful computer that will help the recording go off without a hitch. I've provided my email here in the description. So if they have any questions, they can access it here as well. And then I can create this event. I'll click next at the bottom. I can choose how far in advance people can schedule, how long I plan the interview to be. We'll choose 30 minutes and we'll set my availability as nine to five every weekday. You can add time before the event, which is a good idea to help your guests with any technical aspects. And after the event, I would choose up to five minutes because you want to make sure your Riverside recording is completely uploaded for all of your remote guests before they close the browser. I'll hit next and we're ready to invite people using this Calendly link. Now that you've created your Calendly event on your Calendly account, copy the link to that specific interview event, and then include that in your email to prospective interview guests. You'll see here I have an email and I've included that Calendly link saying you can schedule a time here. When someone clicks that link, they'll be brought to this page, which shows a calendar of upcoming available dates. They can click a date, choose a time slot, hit next. They'll put in their information, name, email. And then when they click schedule event, they will receive an email with all of the information you put in your Calendly event so they can join your Riverside recording. And you'll see in the email they receive, they have the recording checklist that we input in our Calendly account, the link to actually tune into the Riverside recording. And of course they have my email if they have any other questions. Using a scheduling service like Calendly is a great way to put all the pertinent information regarding the call in one email to your interview guests so you don't have to go back and forth and it's easier for them to join. Another important aspect of your interview are the questions you're going to be asking. Now again, we have several videos on developing good interview questions, and this is another great place to use AI like ChatGPT to generate those questions. We'll link a video above and in the description to help you come up with some questions in your niche or topic. But whatever your questions, try to go off the beaten path and ask deep questions, and also be ready to in the moment change up how you're asking the questions to get even more information out of your guest. Also asking interesting questions like, what would you do differently with the knowledge you have today? Or what decisions would you make telling your younger self. Those kinds of questions will help open up the door to more interesting topics and really get your guests talking about what they're passionate about. And that's really a key aspect. When you're interviewing someone, finding their passion and that thing that they get excited talking about, that will really open up the interview and make it engaging and give you great clips to share later. And we'll show you how to do that with Riverside. Once you've put together a bullet list of questions and possible topics, be sure to send that to your interview guest a couple days before the actual recording. This will help them prepare and feel comfortable, ready for the interview. Also in that email with your interview questions, include that Riverside Studio link one more time so they know exactly what to click when it's time to record. And if they'll be recording from a mobile device, which you can download the Riverside app for both iPhone, Android, and iPad, and still get high quality video and audio recordings, you can include the link to the app in the email as well. We'll put links in the video description for you to use in that email. So your interview date is set. Your guest has all the information they need, including the Riverside Studio link, instructions to record, and the questions. So now let's get into the gear or technical aspects to help your guest look and sound the best they can. As we mentioned before, encourage your guest to use wired headphones. This reduces issues like batteries running out or things like AirPods, which can have spotty connection. Any inexpensive wired pair of headphones will do, even the ones that came with some of your Apple devices, the white ear pods. Just have them use any pair of wired headphones with Riverside. When it comes to microphone, the built-in microphone on most laptops and desktops will not sound great. If that's all they have, you can fix that audio. We have a great video on fixing bad audio on the Riverside channel, by the way. You can check it out above or the link in the description. But any kind of external mic is better than the built-in laptop or computer mic. If they're wearing some wired headphones that has a microphone on the lanyard, that's actually better than the built-in one on their computer, and they can choose that as their audio input. But if they have an external microphone, especially a USB mic, that will sound vastly better than anything built into their computer. Now, if you have the ability to send a USB mic to your interview guest, or they might purchase something because they want to sound good in the interview, we would highly recommend the Audio-Technica ATR2100X. We'll put a link to this microphone in the video description. This is a USB and XLR microphone, but one of the keys is it has a USB-C connection. That's going to be compatible with most modern laptops, and they can just use one cable to connect it to their computer without some kind of adapter. 
This microphone sounds really great. They can also go with the Samson Q2U, or you can send that to them. Again, these microphones are both under $100 and will vastly improve the audio of your guests. Depending on which mic or kit you go with, I would recommend getting a tabletop stand to either send to your guests or have your guests use it. This way they're not holding the microphone during the interview. That will reduce a lot of the clicks and pops from their audio side. Both of these microphones also have a headphone jack built in, and that's what your guests should plug their headphones into. This way they can both hear their voice as they record and your voice through Riverside. Then they would choose their microphone as the audio input and output together. I'll show you what that looks like in Riverside in just a moment. If you're recording video, and we always suggest doing video content with your podcast because you can upload that to YouTube, share video clips on social media like TikTok and Reels, and it greatly increases the engagement of audience members to your show. Recording video is not as hard as you would think either. There's lots of webcams you can either recommend or send to your interview guests. The Logitech Streamcam is a great option, records high quality video. It is about $150. Or if you're wanting 4K video quality, the Opal C1 is a great webcam as well. We'll put links to our reviews of the best webcams in the video description. But most guests are probably going to use the built-in camera on their computer or their iPad. Those cameras can be okay, but a couple things you want to keep in mind. Number one, if they're using a laptop, having that laptop sit on a desk is going to give you a pretty unbecoming up angle as they record, kind of like you're looking up their nose. You want them to look their best, and so recommend they prop their laptop up on some books or a box to try and get that webcam up to eye level. You want to make sure that the camera is at that eye level so it's at a becoming angle, not down at the desk pointed upwards. Now if they have an iPhone and they're using a Mac, an incredible feature here is called Continuity Camera. Continuity Camera is a feature that allows you to use an iPhone as a wireless webcam with Macs from 2018 or newer. You can send them an inexpensive tripod to hold their iPhone during the interview, or there's lots of great accessories you can send them that either mounts to a laptop lid or even a desktop display that will hold the iPhone. It uses the iPhone back camera, which is going to be some of the best quality video you can get right underneath mirrorless or DSLR cameras. So if they have an iPhone and a Mac, you definitely want to recommend using continuity camera. When you join with Riverside and use continuity camera, all they have to do is choose their iPhone as the video input in Riverside, and they'll be using it as their webcam. Again, this is probably the best video quality you're going to get from most guests who don't already have a dedicated camera for this. You will need to make sure that they're updated to macOS Ventura and iOS 16. Those software versions have been out for about a year, so they should most likely be running those newest versions. And if you're having issues in Google Chrome with Continuity Camera, you could try the Brave web browser and Continuity Camera typically works there. The last piece of your guest video and audio setup will be lighting. They probably don't have dedicated lights they can set up for the interview. So recommend that they find a room with a window and sit in front of the window. You don't want a window behind them because that will create a silhouette effect and it's not going to look good on camera. If they sit in front of a window, if it's too harsh, meaning there's so much light that it's just kind of overblown and you just see white, then they can throw a sheet over it or maybe close a curtain in front of the window. The main thing is have them facing the window rather than having a window behind them creating that silhouette effect. If you have the option to send them a light or purchase a light and send out a kit, there's some small LED panels that you can buy for under $100, battery powered. Send that with a small tripod. We'll put recommendations in the description, and then they can use that as their light source. If it's a big interview and your guest is technically savvy, you could send them a lighting kit with a soft box. That will be a light on a stand and a soft box to create that really appealing soft light, even lighting to eliminate those harsh shadows. And they could set that up as they record. We'll put links to both inexpensive lighting options and our portable, and some of those softbox kits in the video description, and you can send those out as well. We also have an entire video on the best recording kits you could send out for mobile, tablet, and desktop or laptop. We'll put a link to that video in the description as well. All right, you've sent your guests your interview questions. They have all the links to Riverside ready to record. They have all their gear set up, hopefully a USB microphone, wired headphones, and some kind of lighting source. And now it's the day to record. Make sure you as the host join your Riverside studio about five or 10 minutes before the scheduled time. I've done interviews on Riverside and my guest is early, five, even 10 minutes early than the recording time. And so you wanna make sure that they don't arrive to an empty studio. Make sure you're present in the studio ready to receive your guest. Here I've logged into riverside.fm and I'll go and enter the studio that I've chosen to record. Make sure you go into the right studio, the one that you've sent your guest the link for. Here's the host I'm going to choose. I'm using headphones. I'm choosing my video source, which is the Blackmagic Design A10 Mini Switcher and my audio device, the Mix Pre 3 for both my mic and speaker output and now I can join the studio. Even here in the studio, maybe the guest texts you or emails you last minute saying, I can't find the link, can you send me the link for Riverside? You could still do that right here. 
Under the Invite People section, you'll see the guest link. Here you can click Copy Link and send that to them and they can join this studio. When they click the link in that email, remind them to open it either in Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge for recording in Riverside. This is the screen they'll see. This is the pre-studio lobby. Your guests can input their name in this field. Again, hopefully they're using wired headphones and they would choose, I'm using headphones. You see it just appears as a video input. My iPhone connects and now I'm using it to record. Now you'll see this is the low angle we were talking about. Whether they're using an iPhone or a laptop, you wanna make sure that they elevate this camera using some books or some boxes. This way it's more eye level and a much more pleasing angle to video record. Maybe they've purchased or you've sent them the ATR2100X microphone. They've plugged their wired headphones into that. So they should choose the ATR2100X as both the microphone and speaker for this Riverside recording. Once they've chosen all of that properly, they're ready to join the studio. Now, if you have your studio set to private and require guests to be admitted into the studio, you'll see a request here in the studio saying so-and-so is wanting to join, click admit, and then they'll appear. If you've set it to public or you don't require guests to wait in the lobby, they'll come right into the studio as soon as they click join. Now, from your guest perspective, this is what they'll see. They won't see a record button. Again, only you as the host have the ability to record. But if your guest wants to share something, like share a tab in their browser or share their screen to show something during the recording, your guest can actually do that by clicking the share button down here at the bottom and share their screen. If you're on a Riverside business plan, they can even upload a PDF keynote or PowerPoint file and present slides during the recording. You can also choose to upload that ahead of time and give your guest control during the recording and then they can control the slides. Pretty cool. The guests will also have access to the chat window where you as the host can send messages if you have multiple guests and you need to let someone know, hey, check your hair or maybe adjust your piece of clothing, you could send that in this chat box and then all of your guests will see that. Again, if you're on a Riverside business plan, you can actually private chat each individual guest and only they will see your messages. Before you start recording, your guests can still change their audio input and output. If they roll over speaker down here at the bottom, they can change their speaker source, they can adjust their camera and change their microphone input. Again, these options are only available before you record. So it's important that you as the host make sure that they have the correct devices selected. Now, one of the powerful features of Riverside is you can see your remote guests here in the right-hand sidebar. Under their name, click this little arrow icon and you can actually see the camera, microphone, and speaker device that they are using. Here, I can see that my guest is using their iPhone and continuity camera for video and they're using the USB microphone for the mic and speaker output. I double checked and now we're good to go. And if you're on a Riverside business plan, you can actually choose a different device for the camera, mic, or speaker and actually prompt your guest to change their device. That's a really powerful feature, especially if you have non-technologically savvy guests or they might be worried about choosing the right piece of equipment. You can actually choose it for them as long as it's connected to the computer and all they have to do is click a button and approve the change. Now recording with Riverside, you can have up to eight guests in the Riverside studio all recording at once and you get separate video and audio tracks for every guest. This way you can download those later and edit in your video editor of choice. Or you can use the Riverside editor, which we'll show you in a moment, to put everything together seamlessly right inside Riverside. Now once you've double checked that your guest is ready to record, let's hit the record button here on the host side of our Riverside studio. You and the guest will see the countdown and you're off and running. Now you can start recording your podcast interview, your video podcast, and you and your guest are being recorded in high quality video and audio. You can check the upload progress for your local video and audio files. Again, that's the power of Riverside. Every guest, all your remote guests and yourself, your video and audio is being recorded locally on device for the highest possible quality. And those files are uploaded progressively throughout the recording. You can see the progress of that recording by looking here at the top. We'll have an average percentage. You'll see here it goes between 70, 80, and 90% uploaded for those files. And you can look at every guest here in the right-hand sidebar. Here you'll see that their video and audio files are about 99% uploaded, but you can be confident by looking at that percentage that their video and audio files are being uploaded to Riverside as you record. Now, one of the main things when interviewing guests is be present in the moment. As your guest is talking about their life or answering your questions, there's going to be opportunities for you to ask even better questions or follow-up questions that will really get them to open up about engaging information. So pay attention during the interview, be alert, be in the moment, and be ready to add those interesting questions. Another great feature in Riverside during an interview is you can actually add markers to your recording. If I go to the bottom of the Riverside studio, you'll see the mark clip option. If I click that, you'll see a marker has been created. And on your Riverside recordings page, there will actually be 60 second clips created 30 seconds before and after the marker that I just clicked. 
So if your guest says something really engaging or really impactful and you want to make sure you pull that for a social media clip, just choose that Mark Clip button at the bottom of the Riverside Studio and you'll be able to find that content way faster later. Now hopefully you've prepped your guests to make sure to stay in the studio until their files are 100% uploaded. Let's say you finish the interview, you're all done, and you're going to do a goodbye or some kind of formal ending, but just prep them to say stay around for just a few moments after we say goodbye. I'm going to stop the Riverside recording by clicking stop down at the bottom, and you'll see that the upload percentage is progressing for both myself and all my guests. Once you see upload complete in the right hand sidebar for each guest, it will also say upload complete at the top of the studio. Now you can be sure that all of the video and audio files have been uploaded for your remote guests and they can leave the studio and you'll have access to everything later. You can wish your guest well, let them know you'll send a follow up once the episode is posted with some links and maybe some clips that they could share on their social media and you're ready to edit your content. Now if I want to access the recordings from this interview, I can just click view recordings here in the studio or I can log into my Riverside account, go to the studio where I recorded and click view recordings. Here I'll see all of my past recordings, including the one I just did, the important interview. And let's jump into one of these recordings pages. This is now the recordings page you'll see every time you've finished a recording and all the files have been uploaded. If for some reason one of the guests on the call closed their laptop or maybe they lost power before their video files were totally uploaded, don't worry, there may be a way to recover those. Here on the recordings page, click the three dots and then click copy link to upload page. You can also just instruct guests to go to riverside.fm slash upload. By going to that link, Riverside will check to see if there are any recordings still on that guest's computer that still need to be uploaded, video or audio files. Once everything is uploaded, Riverside won't see any more files to upload and you'll be good to go. Now here on the recordings page, let's look at all the different options you have. Also under that three dot menu, you can choose to rename this recording or copy the recording ID if you need to contact our support team for any of the specific audio and video tracks for this recording, copy that recording ID and send that to them in the live chat. To access the live chat help, click the question mark in the bottom right hand corner, then you can choose chat support. You can choose our live chat option and let them know what the issue is and they'll help you right here on the recordings page. Another tool is this share option. I can click the share option and a link will be copied to my clipboard. When someone receives that link, even if they're not logged into Riverside and don't have an account, They'll be able to access all of the video and audio files for every guest for this particular recording. See here I can scroll down, download the individual raw audio and raw video files for every guest and any clips that have been saved by the host or someone else with access to the studio, those can be downloaded with anyone who has this link as well. You can also send a link for someone to have access to all of the recordings of a particular studio but not actually have a Riverside account. Here on the recordings page for a studio, I can click this copy shareable link. And when someone loads that in their web browser, they can access all of the recordings in this particular studio, but not have access to make clips or jump into the studio to record. This is a useful feature if you have someone editing your video and audio content. You don't want to give them access to your Riverside account, but you want them to be able to download the files for all of your recordings. Send them this shareable link. Back on the individual recordings page, next to that share link, I can actually export all of the audio and video files, including screen shares, presentation recorder files, media board items, into Adobe Premiere Pro. When exporting, I can choose to include the uncompressed WAV files, any markers that have been set inside the studio. That again is a business only feature. When you've set markers, you can actually see those markers in the Riverside editor. And on the business plan, you can export those markers to Adobe Premiere which can really help editing that timeline or sequence knowing the points of interest. I can choose to export all of the presentation recorder files, individual video and audios of the guests, any screen shares, and choose to export this to Adobe Premiere. You'll receive an email when this is ready with a zip file. When you unzip that file, you'll see all the individual video and audio tracks, plus an XML file. When you import that into Adobe Premiere, it will set your entire project onto a sequence, everything laid out in time, ready for you to edit. Next to the Premiere export, we also have the Riverside editor. Here in the middle, you can preview the recording and see a preview of the transcript. Riverside has AI powered transcripts in over 100 languages, and you can download that transcript in multiple formats to use elsewhere. You can click download transcript and choose the subtitles or SRT format or transcription TXT format. You can use the text format as a blog post or send it through AI to generate social media posts. And you can use the SRT format for captions and subtitles, either in YouTube or in Adobe Premiere. We have a whole video on using that SRT and TXT format files. You can check it out above or the link in the description. Scrolling down, there's a download all button if you'd like to download all the video and audio tracks for every participant. Or you can scroll down, go to each person individually, click high quality, 
and you can download the raw video file here. We also have a raw synced video file. The only difference here is if someone joined mid call, let's say you recorded for 20 minutes, someone joined the call, you record for 20 more minutes. The raw synced video file will add 20 minutes of blank space to that guest video file that joined late. This way, when you're editing in Final Cut or Premiere, all of the video files will be the same length. Most of the time, you'll want to just download the raw video file, and the raw audio or WAV file is the highest quality audio you can get for each participant. We also give you the option to download the MP3 compressed audio file. There's also backup recordings. That's the internet recording. It will be a compressed version of the track, but it's there as a backup. And of course, you can click the three dots and choose copy track ID if you need help from our support team and they ask for that copy or recording ID, that's the link they're looking for. Again, you can see any screen shares you can download here individually and any presentation recorder files can be downloaded as well. Those will download as MP4 or WAV files onto your computer, typically in your downloads folder. At the bottom, you'll see all of the clips that we have saved from this particular recording. To make a new clip, we're actually gonna use the Riverside editor. If I click edit and create clips in the upper right hand corner, I'm now given the option to create a vertical 9x16, a square 1x1 post, or a full screen 16x9. I'll choose 16x9. Let's say this is a full length podcast and I want that full screen video. Now we're inside the Riverside Editor. This is a powerful area where you can edit your video and audio content via transcription. You'll see here on the left side a complete transcription of the recording, separated by speaker. You'll see the speaker labels whenever someone spoke, the timestamps, and to edit the content, all you have to do is select the text, click delete or hit delete on your keyboard, and you remove that section from the clip you're about to export. Now this is non-destructive. You're not removing video and audio from the clips that have been recorded. You're just removing it for this export of a clip that you're creating now. You'll see removing text here. It is reflected down in this timeline as well. That grayed out portion is what we've cut out here in the transcription. Now here in the editor, even though I've chosen 16 by nine layout, I can still change it right here. By clicking full, I can choose to go one by one for square or nine by 16 for vertical orientation. Nine by 16 is great for YouTube shorts, TikTok and Instagram reels. Clicking the little person icon, I can choose what tracks I'd like to include on this export. Let's say I would choose not to include this video participant. I can uncheck their box or check them again and they'll be brought back into this clip. I can reorder the participants depending on who I'd like displayed on what quadrant. And under our layout features, we have lots of different options here, like removing the grid or space between video, and you can choose our shared AI layout. When you export with the shared AI layout, it will focus on the active speaker throughout the recording, switching between their video, or if you're presenting slides using the presentation recorder, screen share, or media board, it will focus on that piece of media and put everyone's video small in picture in picture off to the side. We also have another split AI layout, which will make sure the video does not overlap any of the slides being presented. Or you can even choose full frame AI, then it will focus on the active speaker or show the slides in full screen throughout the recording. We'll choose the speaker layout here. And if you chose to have gaps in your layout, you can even upload a custom image right here and change the background that appears beneath the speakers. You can even upload a logo if you would like. You can resize and then move that logo anywhere you would like on top of this video clip that you're exporting. Another powerful feature of our transcription based editor is you can search the transcription for any word or phrase to find it quickly. I'll click the search button here in the top right and maybe I want to search for the word editor. It's going to show me all of the instances of that word in the transcription. I can click on the up and down arrows to scroll to each time that word was said. And I'll also see in the timeline at the bottom where each time that word was spoken. I can roll over and see the speaker, the timestamp and the context for where it was spoken. I can click down here in the timeline and the transcript will jump to that moment in the recording where that word was spoken. This is especially powerful when you're wanting to pull those clips for social media, find that perfect 30 or 60 second event and export that moment. I can also drag the in and out points on this purple section, click one of them to remove and now I have a short clip here that I might want to share on social media. Let me change the layout so it's 16 by nine. Maybe I want to just share this short clip but only show a few of the speakers on camera. I can uncheck everything else and just have the split view of the two speakers with my custom logo, drag that in point so it's the perfect length. And now I'm ready to export this vertical clip and share it on social media. I'll click export in the top right corner. I can export up to 4K video. Normalizing audio levels, Riverside will attempt to make sure everyone's volume is the same throughout the clip. If you hear any background noise, you can attempt to remove it here on export and you can remove the Riverside watermark with this toggle. I'll click export. And now you'll receive an email when this clip is ready to download. 
The great part is any clip that you create, you can create as many as you'd like, they're all saved here on the recordings page at the bottom. Scroll all the way down, you'll see the exporting clip that I just created now. Here I have another clip that I can still download right here. I can also preview it if I'd like to view it here before downloading it. And any clips that I haven't exported yet but I was working on are saved as drafts. I can click back into that, continue to edit based on the transcription, using the timeline at the bottom, and then export this video file and it's ready to share with the entire team, upload to social media, or whatever you'd like. A great use of those vertical clips will be to share on TikTok, Instagram Reels, and YouTube Shorts, and tag your interview guests so then they'll see them and hopefully reshare them. And that's how to record a full, high-quality video and audio interview with Riverside and remote guests. If you'd like to learn more about using Riverside and our text-based editor, check out this playlist above or the link in the description. And don't forget to subscribe to the Riverside channel. We have lots of content on gear recommendations, how to build a professional video podcast setup, and how to use AI to streamline your podcast workflow. If you have any questions about using Riverside or remote guests, leave a comment below this video. We look at all of those and we'll answer you there. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you in the next video.